Welcome to Physics 142 Online again. Uh, I've got a homework type problem I'd like to show you here, and uh, one of the complaints I know I had as a student was sometimes a faculty member would do a really easy example problem in class, and then the problems on the homework were impossibly hard. So I thought I'd pick a problem that is actually a pretty moderate difficulty problem and forces you to go back to the very beginning to set things up the way that we did in class. Uh, to really understand motion of an uh, oscillating system. So this is a pendulum coupled together with a horizontal spring. And you can read the problem. The pendulum has a length L and its bob has a mass M. And of course in equilibrium it would be in the vertical position and that's also when it's connected to a spring that's stretched horizontally and the spring is at its unstretched length when the pendulum is hanging vertically. So we want to find the period of oscillation of this pendulum connected to the spring for small amplitude vibrations. And what I've done is I've drawn a picture that shows the pendulum bob displaced a little bit from its equilibrium position and the spring therefore compressed by a distance x. So what we need to do here is write down Newton's second law for the motion of the pendulum bob along its direction of motion and from that we'll be able to extract an expression for the frequency and therefore for the period. So the first thing we always have to do is start with a free body di diagram when we have motion problems. So here is the pendulum bob and the force is acting on it. Well it's got a force due to the tension in the string. right? It's got the weight or the force of gravity straight down, mg. It's also got then the force of the spring and these forces are not drawn into scale but just large enough so that I can hope to show some detail here. And I also should put the angle theta into my sketch. It appears here like that. Now one simplification that I've made, you'll see in my sketch, is that I have drawn the spring force uh, horizontal. And if the spring were actually horizontal when the object was at its lowest position, then when it's compressed a little bit, the spring force would actually be drawn uh, down at an angle. But for small oscillations, then the spring force is, we're going to treat that to be horizontal. And in the coordinate system that we want, we want to consider the uh, direction of motion of the object. And we know that that's the tangential direction, and it would be indicated by the dotted line here. So the perpendicular to that would be this dotted line here and one of the things I'll need to do is resolve the weight into its components uh, and especially we're going to be looking at the component that it has along the direction of motion that one down there so the angle theta here and therefore the component of the weight that's along the direction of motion is mg sine theta and that's the uh, uh, component indicated right here by my cursor. The, uh, the Kx force uh, is, if I put the angle theta into here, then it too has a component along the direction of motion, and that would be, I'll just draw an arrow to it here, that force component would be Kx cosine of theta. And so therefore, if we draw our coordinate system like this, right where here is the tangential direction, and this perpendicular to that along the string would be the radial direction, then we can take the sum of the forces along the tangential direction and set them equal to the mass times the tangential acceleration. Now a word about the acceleration, uh, we would like to relate distance along the direction of motion to the angle theta. And you can see right here, one of the equations that we used before was that that arc length s is equal to the radius times theta. And therefore, if we have a velocity along that direction, that would be ds dt, right? And l being a constant, we just have to take the derivative of theta with respect to t. And one more time, since we want the acceleration along that direction, we take the derivative of the velocity with respect to time, and that gives L times the second derivative of theta with respect to time.
there. So we're going to use that in just a minute in the equation of motion. So let's take a look at the free body diagram and the forces that we see are all negative, which means if the positive direction for the tangential direction is up and to the right, both those forces have components down and to the left. So we have negative kx cosine theta, and then we've got minus mg sine theta, and now on the right-hand side we can substitute in for the tangential acceleration from the bottom left-hand corner as ml d squared theta dt squared. All right, now here's where we're going to make the small angle approximation because obviously this is going to be a really complicated general equation to solve because we've not only got a second derivative of theta with respect to time, but we've got sine and cosine of theta. But a very nice approximation like what we made in class for the uh, simple pendulum is for small theta, the cosine theta is approximately 1 and the sine of theta, if theta is measured in radians, is approximately theta. So if we make those substitutions, now we have an approximate equation, kx minus mg theta equals ml d squared theta dt squared. And one more thing we can do is we also can see that the x, the horizontal displacement of the bob, is about the same as s for very small oscillations. And so if we let that be the case, then we can also say that x is approximately s, which is equal to l times theta. So let's make that substitution minus k l theta minus mg theta equals the right-hand side, ml d squared theta dt squared. All right, and whenever we have differential equations, the standard form that we want to write them in is to solve for the highest order derivative, often. Uh, that's the way we do it. So this becomes d squared theta dt squared, if I divide both sides by ml, and then pull out the theta from the two terms on the right, then I'm going to get minus the quantity, dividing by Lm, so I have k over m plus g over l times theta. And that's my approximate. I should put an approximate sign here. That's my approximate differential equation for the motion of the pendulum coupled to the spring for small oscillations. Now let's take a moment to compare that to the simple pendulum. Because if we just I'm appealing now to your memory or your notes. d squared theta dt squared for the simple pendulum was simply minus g over l times theta. And what we found from that was that the angular frequency omega was square root of g over l. And of course, the period is just 2 pi over omega. Right? So from that differential equation, we guess the solution, we plugged it in, we confirmed that it was true, and that gave us the period. So that was actually then 2 pi square root of L over G. Well, we can solve this problem by analogy now, because the only difference in the differential equation is instead of just G over L, we've got G over L plus K over M. See? So the appropriate way of getting the omega is to see that omega is now the square root of, well, we've got the g over l, but we've also got the k over m. So it's actually square root of k over m plus g over l. And as a result then, oops, uh, I need to go up here and get the eraser. Now I can write down an expression for the period in one easy step because it's just 2 pi over that. So the outcome right here may look a little bit messy, but it's 2 pi over the square root of k over m plus g over l. So that's 
a result we never would have guessed just by looking at the problem, but taking the time to write down Newton's second law, make our small angle approximation, and then compare the result that we got right here to a problem that we had already solved before, that allows us to get the answer. Okay, so there are some problems on the homework that may not be quite this difficult, but ask you to do something similar, such as the case of the ice cube that slides around in the bottom of the spherical bowl. You need to do the same kind of analysis there, draw the free body diagram, write down the sum of the forces along the direction of motion, set that equal to MA, do a little simplification, and you'll get an answer.